Good afternoon, James Preston with you on Kalkine TV. Live from Sydney, great to have your company. This is the Stocks in Action show, where we take a look at how the stocks are faring in real time and the news surrounding them. First, let's look at the ASX 200 and the ASX listed stocks that are trending for today. The S&P ASX 200 is up today, gaining 90.5 points or 1.25% to 7,325.8, despite crossing below its 20-day moving average. The top performing stocks in this index are IGO up 5.93% and Chalice Mining up 5.6%. The index has lost 0.73% for the last five days but sits 1.09% below its 52-week high. Ten of 11 sectors are higher today along with the S&P ASX 200 index. Energy is the best performing sector, gaining 2.24% and rebounding from its recent decline. This sector is off 2.06% for the past five days. On Monday, in a gloomy session, the Australian Benchmark Index dropped 1.81% and closed the session 133.6 points lower at 7,235.3. On that note, let us quickly glance through some significant developments globally. On Monday, Wall Street rebounded from lower levels and global equity markets surged from a four-week low as market participants bet on economic growth while the US dollar retraced from Friday's 10-week high. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 paired much of the losses seen in the previous session as investors repositioned portfolios after last week's surprise by the US Federal Reserve regarding its hawkish shift. The Dow Jones added 1.76% to 33,876.98, while the S&P 500 gained 1.4% to 4,224.8. The Nasdaq Composite was up 0.81% to 1,441.49. Sectors which are sensitive to the economy's fluctuations such as energy firms and banks recovered in Monday's session after they had fallen sharply since the US Fed's meeting on Wednesday when the central bank caught market participants off guard by anticipating rate hikes in 2023. On Monday, the yields on 10-year Treasury notes turned higher after falling to a four-month low of 1.354%. However, the benchmark note was still trading well below its last week's high of around 1.6% after investors reacted to the Fed's statements on rate hikes. On Monday, the US dollar retraced from its 10-week high made on Friday as market participants evaluated whether a perceived hawkish stance by the Fed will mark a halt in the bear trend in the US dollar, which has been in place since March 2020. The US dollar index fell 0.424%, off from Friday's 10-week high of 92.408. The Australian and New Zealand dollars increased on Monday, taking a much-needed breather after recent losses against the US dollar, buoyed by a hawkish stance from the US Fed last week. But both currencies traded near their respective lowest levels since late last year. The Australian dollar shot up by 0.76% to US 75.3 cents, while the New Zealand dollar was up 0.8% to US 69 cents. A stronger US dollar has also put pressure on cryptocurrencies, with Bitcoin falling nearly 8.9% to US $32,241. Crypto rivals such as Ether and Dogecoin also lost 14.5% and 26.9% respectively, making it a very difficult day for crypto traders. The latest in gold prices is next, but first let's take a very short break on Kalkine TV. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Kalkine TV. Welcome back, James Preston with you. You're watching Kalkine TV live from our studios in Sydney and this is the Stocks in Action show. Let's now take a look at some more trending updates. On Monday, gold prices recovered from some losses from its biggest weekly percentage fall since March 2020. A halt in the rally of the US dollar helped yellow metal gain some ground. Spot gold was up 1.1% 
to US $1,783.29 an ounce, snapping its six-day losing streak. However, it still remained near the lowest level since early May 2021. The US gold futures gained 0.98% to US $1,781.80 per ounce. On Monday, iron ore futures in Asia tumbled with losses widening after Chinese authorities initiated an investigation into the spot market as prices of iron ore remained at a higher level despite repeated warnings from the government against hoarding and speculation. The most actively traded futures, the September month delivery contract of iron ore on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange, closed 8.8% lower at 1,121 yuan per tonne. Copper prices steadied on Monday, slightly up from their lowest level since mid-April, as China affirms to put a leash on commodity price rallies. The benchmark copper futures on the London Metal Exchange was up 0.6% at US $9,203 after falling to US $9,011 earlier in the day. Crude oil prices soared on Monday due to a pause in the much-awaited decision on the revival of the US-Iran nuclear deal. August delivery Brent crude oil futures traded 0.04% down at US $74.84 per barrel. And WTI crude oil futures for August delivery traded at US $72.94 per barrel, down 0.25% as of the 22nd of June 2021, 9.55am Australian Eastern Standard Time. Both the benchmarks have recorded gains in the past four weeks amid increased optimism over COVID-19 vaccinations. The rebound has boosted the spot prices of crude oil in Europe and Asia to multi-year highs. Adding to that, a weaker US dollar has further pushed the crude oil demand. A weak dollar makes oil cheaper for other currency holders. We are very much seeing that at play in the market at the moment. A halt in the revival of the 2015 US-Iran nuclear deal on Sunday after the win of Ibrahim Razi in the presidential election. Oil also got support from forecast of lower US oil production, giving OPEC more power to manage the oil market. Moving on now to some news involving the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, and Web Central Group has announced that it's received credit approval for a $16.6 million debt facility from ComBank. As per the announcement, the net proceeds of the debt facility will be utilised to partially repay the loan from 5G Networks Limited, the current balance being approximately $41 million Australian. The debt facility consists of a $15 Australian million dollar market rate loan facility, a $1.5 million bank guarantee facility and a $100,000 credit card facility. The debt facility will also reduce the total borrowing cost of Web Central with the expected interest rate margin of 4.25%, approximately 0.7% lower than the margin charged on the 5G Networks loan. The company announcement read that the term for the facility is three years. There's also news for one of Australia's largest cosmetical clinic chains and we'll book in for a session right after this short break on Kalkine TV. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Welcome back and thanks to your company. James Preston with you live from Calkine Studios in Sydney. This is the Stocks in Action show. Let's now take a look at some more trending updates. And Silk Laser Australia has shared that the company has now successfully completed a fully underwritten placement to raise 20 million Australian dollars, which will result in the issue of approximately 4.7 million new shares. Silk Laser is one of Australia's largest specialist clinic networks, offering a range of non-surgical aesthetic products and services. As per the announcement, proceeds of the placement will be used to partially fund the acquisition of, of, of ASC Group. This group consists of Beauty Services Holdings, LMD2 PTY Limited, and their broader group of entities. These units together operate Australian skin clinics in Australia and also the cosmetic clinic in New Zealand. Completion of the acquisition is expected by the end of August 2021. Meanwhile, this ASX-listed stock is in the news today. 
Little Green Farmer has acquired a world-class, fully operational GACP cultivation and GMP licensed medicinal cannabis asset in Denmark for almost $20 million. This plant has a capacity to produce in excess of 20 tonnes of biomass per annum, including 12 tonnes per annum of dried cannabis flour. The acquisition is a clear strategic fit with Little Green Farmer's existing operations and capabilities and will immediately provide LGP with additional cultivation and manufacturing capacity and boosting its planned capacity expansion by up to two years. The company shared it has got firm commitments to raise $27.2 million by way of placement in connection with the acquisition. The placement proceeds will be applied to part fund the acquisition, build the company's European team and fund capital expenditure. From a little green herb to a company that's looking to go greener and Prominence Energy has today signed a binding term sheet to acquire 20% of Patriot Hydrogen Limited. However, the agreement is still subject to completion of the company's due diligence and also shareholder approval. Patriot itself has secured its second order for one P2H unit with Sweetman Renewables Limited as well. The sale will take place for one unit at the cost of Australian $2.9 million. By delivering this in quarter 4 2021, Patriot Hydrogen will earn revenue for technology license fees, service and also training fees. It will also receive a gross sales percentage fee for the hydrogen, biochar and also the power sale. And finally, also making news today, Milton Corporation has announced that the firm will merge with Washington H. Sol Pattinson and company via a scheme of arrangement. The merger will help in the creation of a leading and more diversified Australian investment house. The focus is to continue long-term market outperformance and growth in dividends. It will help MLT to have a significant step change in market capitalisation of approximately 11 billion Australian dollars with increased index participation. It will be a combination of two great investment houses. Milton's management team will complement WHSP's existing investment expertise. All right then, that's all for now. Please stay tuned to Kalkine TV for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on markets, the economy and diverse themes and sectors. And Rachel Jones will be with you in around the next 15 minutes for the Buzzing Trends program. I'm James Preston for Kalkine TV.